Zeus, Master of Olympus, is one of those city building titles that doesn't usually make it into discussions about classics. It does make it into the discussion about the Impression City Building series though, generally followed by the explanatory, the one after Pharaoh. At least that's what my experience has been with it. But ever since I've started my Is It A Classic series of videos, I have had some fairly interesting thoughts and realizations about past gaming experiences. So I went into Zeus and Poseidon now, 20 years later, and I'll ask the question, is it a classic? Zeus follows in the thematic footsteps of its predecessors, this time the setting being that of ancient Greece. Quite possibly the first thing that you will be noticing is the user interface. It is what it has traditionally been in previous impressions games and uses the same sort of general ideas of grouping various buildings in relevant departments, but the longer you spend playing the game and indeed getting used to the UI, you notice how much quicker you can get to your building options. Also, I'm not sure if these have been pared down from Pharaoh, but it does seem so. If this happened, it was for the better, otherwise things are just way better organized. By the way, all the footage in this video is recorded with the community made high resolution mod. That's why everything looks tiny and gorgeous. Otherwise it would have looked uh, larger, but still gorgeous. These community high resolution mods are available for all the Impression City Builder games and I will post a link to the Zeus one in the description. One of the more annoying things about the UI is the Greek inspired font the game uses. While a cool thematic choice, just like Papyrus was for Pharaoh, probably the only situation when using Papyrus should be allowed by the way. But unlike Papyrus, I found this one much more annoying to read, it took longer to get used to and even then I was still not a fan of it. You know, I thought about this when I was playing Pharaoh as well, I think it would have been cool to have the option to toggle between the thematic font and the regular one. But another thing that you'll have to get used to, and in this case it will happen in no time because this is a super useful feature, is that the UI makes it much easier for you to check on everything your population needs with considerably less clicks than in previous titles. Nothing is hidden under different drop down menus or separate windows, you can see the distribution of food, water, health and everything else straight from the UI, and this makes it that much faster for you to discover problems in your supply chains and such. For instance, in one game I just couldn't understand why my houses weren't evolving, until I then went to the distribution tab and saw that they weren't getting any food. Why weren't they getting any food? Because I had forgotten to build a food stall in the Agora. The animation work is simply great with this title as well, and the worker animations are fascinating. While some are meant to be funny, like the Deus Ex Machina Angel in the theater and the oil press, some are just goofy. Let's use the gymnasium as an example. It shows us three buff dudes supposedly working out. One of them is holding a lady on his shoulder. Okay, sure, it's a test of strength sort of thing. I just hope he's not doing it for reps, for her sake. The second one is flexing. He's doing a most muscular pose. Not exactly an exercise per se, but also not out of the realm of possibility in a gym to be honest. Now, the third dude, the third dude is supposedly doing a push-up. That is not a push-up. That's closer to maybe a back-stretching exercise more akin to yoga, but even in that case, your entire lower body is on the floor. The entire point of a push-up is to keep your body as stiff as possible and push yourself up from the floor with your arms. He is bending at the waist while still having his toes planted on the ground. The amount of tension in the lower back would fuck him up so fast it wouldn't even be funny. I guess that's what happens when coders try to illustrate physical exercise. First blood. Oh and by the way, the trade pose dude is also getting something a little extra under the table because he is wired. Just look at the dude. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. It's either that or he's tapping into the speed force. The art style is characterized by fairly exaggerated and stylized proportions, as well as bendy unnatural angles. It gives you a particular look, setting it aside even if slightly from the previous games in the overall city building series. Might not be everyone's brand of distilled drink, but I dug it. Quite possibly the most important feature of city planning that the Impressions games have introduced to the gaming public 
in a roundabout emergent meta gameplay sort of way is the building blocks. I do not know if this is how they envision the games being played, maybe, but in the quest to both satisfy the needs of your population, appease the walker system and build as few buildings as possible, the most ancient of Impressions games players have come up with a myriad of building block designs meant to make building your city as compact and well organized as possible. By the way, really the only place you need to check out for super deep information, hints, tips, walkthroughs and indeed block designs for all impression games are the Heaven Games website, in this case Zeus Heaven. I have used them since my Caesar 3 video. So the building blocks in Zeus are a bit of a departure from those of previous games with most of them being concentric in nature. This is thanks to a building feature introduced in Zeus, the avenues and boulevards. They have the same role as plazas from the older games of increasing the desirability of an area but they take up extra lateral space, basically increasing the range of the road by making it wider. This means that they will improve the region to make your houses develop faster and at the same time allow you to basically double dip and place houses on the side of the avenue as well because the game considers them roads. Zeus also introduced two different types of housing normal and elite housing. Damn rich people needing their own special agora and shit. But now that I mentioned it again and I'm also talking about features introduced in Zeus, let's talk about the agora for a bit. The agora was the center of public life in ancient Greek cities. This is where lots of social, political and many other events happened, but at the same time it was also used as a marketplace. In Zeus, the Agora can only be placed on already existing stretch of road and it then has to be populated with different stalls, which you have to do and can do at your own pace. The common Agora has space for 3 stalls, food, fleece and oil, while the elite Agora has space for 3 extra stalls, wine, armor and horses. This subdivision might seem that it complicates the marketplace, but when it is in use, it actually allows you some very clear knowledge and control over what is being sold and where. Likewise, the separation between the various goods allows you to better notice gaps in your supply chains, or like me, if you simply forget to build a stall altogether. Back to the elite housing now. As opposed to common housing, which can be placed anywhere as long as they have road access, Elite housing requires to be located in already desirable areas, so you need to have a nice common block already. And they have some extra requirements as evidenced by the 3 extra stalls in the Elite Agora. These houses also occupy considerably more space, which makes them a pain to work with, but they also produce better troops, so you'll generally need them. Zeus seems to be more lenient when it comes to lack of food or other necessities. People move out and the houses devolve but they will come back really soon once you do have the items back in the stalls and the homes evolve back up. In the previous impressions games I lost several missions because my people left and then even if I fixed the issues they never really came back. The game changing importance of roadblocks which were introduced in Pharaoh was acknowledged by the developers and they are now part of the base user interface in Zeus. No extra clicks required for you to place roadblocks, they are just there, they have their own button from the starting UI. A great choice in terms of streamlining. Since I just mentioned troops, I unfortunately have to talk a bit about the combat. Ugh. But this is yet another aspect where Zeus very pleasantly surprised me. There is an auto defend button, which is great for me because as you'll know if you've watched any of my city building videos, I do not like combat in city builders. And the combat in impressions games has always seemed to me to be tacked on. Also, you can just bribe invading armies which is even better because you can pay them off and you'll still get a victory monument out of it. So I have only positive things to say about the combat. Huh. The campaigns in Zeus are called adventures to work with the Greek myth theme. This isn't simply aesthetic because they are set up to be fluid and continuous. Basically it's as if you're playing one long mission separated into various steps just like chapters in a story. The gods in Zeus and Poseidon require extra special analysis since the game does something super different from the previous ones when it comes to its divinities. The gods not only walk the earth, but apparently they can also hang 10.
you don't build temples or shrines dedicated to each deity anymore, instead you build them gigantic sanctuaries which will invite them to materialize within your city and offer you various benefits when you pray to them. You can also build a hero's hall, from which you will be able to summon mythical Greek heroes and have them deal with likewise mythical Greek monsters threatening your cities. So I remember reading about the god mechanics when the game came out and I was like, I'm not really interested in that. Also, the Greek myths, while cool when you're in grade school, didn't have a lot of staying power with yours truly. I very quickly moved on to Jules Verne and then Norman Spinrad and such. But now, after playing the game, I have to say that I enjoy the Zeus gods way more than the mobster gods of Caesar 3. You still had special or catastrophic events in Caesar 3. The only difference is that in Zeus, it's not just goods disappearing from your granaries or shit burning down. It's a bronze giant or hydra wrecking your shit. The thing I thought I would hate about the game turned out to actually be a very positive addition to it. The thing that I did not like at all was the music. I turned that shit down within the first 5 minutes of my first game because I found it to be extremely annoying. But enough about that, let's get to the crux of the video. So now come up the question, what maketh a video game a classic? Some would say it's subjective, some would say it depends, and there is definitely something to be said about subjective classics, which is something I talk about in this series as well. But in order for a game to be an objective classic, it has to be considered to be good over a period of time, has to be remembered as such, and also it has to stand up to current day scrutiny. And I also consider that 10 years is the minimum period required for such a hindsight based judgement to take place. In this case, it's been 20, so we're fine in that respect. Playing Zeus was a very interesting experience for yours truly since this was the very first time I actually played it. And I have to admit that I did go into it with quite a hefty amount of skepticism, thinking that I would really dislike the whole god angle. Look, I really love Pharaoh because of the attention it paid to its theme and how it did it. But I gotta say that Zeus simply feels like a tighter game. Whenever I talk about city builders, I stress the importance of theme quite a bit. And I feel that to be important because even in the case when the gameplay mechanics are great, if the city builder is lacking in theme, the overall experience falls a little short, at least for me. And while I still consider Pharaoh being superior in terms of theme, I have to say that Zeus is indeed superior in terms of gameplay, and it does do its theme well. It mainly comes down to a matter of taste and preference, between ancient Egypt and ancient Greece. Even though it has generally stayed in the shadow of Pharaoh's pyramids, Zeus was very appreciated at the time of its release and it has stayed in the minds and hard drives of city building fans and especially Impressions Games fans. Much like Pharaoh and Caesar 3, it is still very much playable even without the high resolution mod, although I suggest you get it. So I'm pretty clear on declaring it an objective classic and something of a recent subjective classic for myself. I did not expect this. I think Zeus is becoming my favorite of the impression city builder games, at least until next year when I'm gonna play Emperor. Also, if you wanna know my thoughts on Pharaoh and Caesar 3, make sure you check out those videos. But what do you think about Zeus and where does it rank in your top 3 of impressions games? Let me know in the comments, I'm really curious to find out. Hey there dear watcher who's still watching, thank you very much for sticking around. I've recently started a Patreon page, so if you want to and can throw a couple of bucks my way to help me get more games and improve my recording setup, go on there and check out the tiers and rewards. If you can do that but still want to help me grow my channel, please consider subscribing, turning on the notification bell and of course sharing the video far and wide. I've been Steven Ansens, thank you very much for watching, see you next time and have a great rest of the day.